Good afternoon everyone, it's Christine here again. So I'm continuing work on my Roxy Journal of Citri down the garden path piece with the prompt of a glass house and I'm using this beautiful fabric and adding lots of embellishments on the top. So in the last video we worked together on couching down various fibres, I think I kept calling them textiles in the video possibly, um, so apologies for that, but various fibres to create this little little bird. Let's see if I can get him up to the camera and get him a bit more in focus. So lots of beautiful Appleton wools and other just bits of um, knitting wool with little bobbles on it and then lots of threads. Um, and since the video I have also added some sequins because I ended up with a massive bag. I didn't think it was such a big bag when I um, bought it off um, Melanie's Instagram purveyor of reclaimed textiles. Uh, so I've got lots of these shimmery beads to use, um, or sequins, sorry. And then I also had a bag, which I think I got with a bulk bead lot off um, Facebook Marketplace of these pearly green, purple, blue. So I've used those to add some embellishments there. So some sequins, and which I then put these little um, round beads on the top of and put a stitch over them and then put them back down through and then a second stitch just to hold them. And then I had two of these beads and so I put a bead, a larger bead at the base and then a smaller bead on top. And you'll see up here, I've also done quite a bit of um, work on half of a butterfly and I'll come back in another video probably and um, show you how I did that. So we'll finish the other half of the butterfly together. But I thought today we'll work on the second bird, the one behind our one that we've embellished with lots of couching down of fibres. Um, and we'll just do painting with thread for this. So I'm going to use um, a variegated pearl or pearl a cotton from Wonderfill. It's EZM1086. Um, I got these like within the last year, so I know it's probably a, a current number. Um, and it's a thread that's got blues, purples, sort of torps, greys. Um, yeah, probably mainly those colours in it. And variegated means that those colours are sort of across the thread. So as you can see, it sort of changes colour as you look down the thread. So that's great for getting um, some nice variation in the coloration of the bird. So I'm going to start off, I think, up the top, because I think I've got, first of all, some purples and blues, purples that will be coming out, and I want some purples for the head area. So I'm just going to do little stitches. Now, I am making sure that I'm recording after yesterday's, <laughs> yesterday's debacle of not actually being recording when I thought I was recording. So I hope you're all having a great day. Still on holidays here. And it was my partner's actual birthday today, although probably when you're watching this, it might be tomorrow because it, the videos have been taking a bit of a long time to um, process because I've um, been adding in some other bits at the start and end in iMovie. And then I find it takes a long while to save and then a long while to actually upload. So it'll probably not be his birthday by the time you're actually watching it, but it was Monday today, Monday. You know on holidays you start to lose track of time. I almost forgot to even feed the dog because I prepare him lots of vegetables for his dinner and I just said to my partner, I'm gonna pop inside and do a video. We don't need to be eating for the next two hours. And I was getting very ready just to do exactly that. Um, and then I remembered that poor Travis, Travis would definitely be expecting some, some dinner in that time. So I had to go inside and chop up his veggies for him. But we had a lovely lunch today. We went down to King Valley. So that's a winery region near where we're staying, um, sort of an hour, hour from where we are. Well, the King Valley actually starts closer, but the little town, the little spot we're going to is called Whitfield um, and they have a lovely pub hotel there um, that does great food. I went there, I think it was now two years ago, um, back when Travis was a guide dog puppy in training um, and we had a lovely, lovely lunch there. Um, it was at a time when Alex was off um, up the mountain skiing with his brother and I was touring around with Travis the pup. 
Um, and so I wanted to take Alex back there today for his birthday, birthday lunch because they're also, as well as obviously when um, Travis was a guide dog puppy, he's allowed anywhere because guide dogs and guide dog puppies um, have full access rights except to hospitals or to um, formal kitchens like restaurant kitchens and stuff, they can't go in those. But otherwise they've got full access rights everywhere. But this particular um, pub also welcomes dogs at any time regardless of their, their status. So just regular pet dogs are welcomed and yeah, we had a lovely welcome from them. Um, they offered to bring over a bowl, but we always travel with a, a bowl and um, bottle of water for, for Travis when we're out and about anyway. So we had that in our little bag and we had a little picnic blanket for him to lie next to the table on, but they gave us a great little shady spot. Um, we're very welcoming, he got lots of pats from them. And then other tables wanted, as we were leaving, they're like, can you, can you bring him over? We want to give him a pat. <laughs> so he's quite the celebrity. So now you can see we're graduating. We've had the sort of the purpley colored thread. Now we're getting a bit more of um, the gray will start to come through, which is perfect because I think I'll just then proceed down the bird with the gray, gray thread into this grayer, grayer area. So as you can see, the variegated is great because you can actually, get a range of colors without having to constantly be, be changing, changing your thread. I'm not sure exactly whether um, it's going to often when, oh, I've got the thread. I was wondering why it felt weird underneath. There's another little piece that's come off the edge of this that's got caught up in my thread and I keep, kept thinking, oh, there's something that just doesn't feel right. Okay, there we go. Um, so I was thinking with, yeah, with this bird, I could have used an even finer, finer thread, but I think the Pearl A will be an okay um, weight of thread to use, but we'll give it a go. We'll see what it looks like. And then at least you'll know. So just adding the little stitches down here. We can say happy birthday to Alex, who's just coming in. He gives you all a wave. He's enjoying his music out on the balcony. Such a lovely evening here. Blue skies, nice and hot. We went down to the river this afternoon and all had a swim. Travis is an absolute water baby, straight in the water. It's almost like he goes into a trance when he's in the water. I'm just following around the shape of the eye with my stitches. And then I'll start moving down the body with this sort of the, the grey colour. And I'm just putting little feather-like sort of stitches. And so not joining them up, but just um, yeah, leaving a small distance between them and staggering them like feathers, feathers would be on a bird. I'd have to come back and do a little French knot for the eyes. I don't know if the eyes are getting a bit lost in the in the stitching, but we'll see how it looks when we're when we're done. I hope the lighting's okay here. I've just got the natural light from the windows coming in. But this this side of the house gets a bit shaded um, in the afternoon, which is nice. Not to be in the full bright sunshine. beautiful lunch, had the most gigantic parmigianas, um, chicken parma that we've ever seen. Beautiful, moist, juicy chicken parma. Good chips, nice salad. And then I think we were both kind of stuffed after that. Um, we were thinking we would um, yeah, share a couple of desserts, but we all we could fit in was just some gelato. So I had a homemade apple gelato and a lemon gelato. They're just beautiful, so fresh. Something we love in Italy, they have um, what they call sorbetto, so like, um, yeah, lemony, lemony gelato-y sort of melted 
well not totally melted it's usually a bit icy but and I'm not sure if they add anything else to it but it just helps you really digest the, the meal so it's very helpful when you've had a big Italian lunch so the gelato performed that function for us and then yeah we just made our way slowly slowly back home through King Belly didn't go to any wineries or anything today it was well, being a Monday, not many of them probably would have been been open, but we're quite happy we'd had our nice, nice lunch, and Travis got to come along for the experience. And meet his adoring fans. And then, yeah, just relaxing. We spend a lot of time up in this region, so it's not like we have to sort of rush around doing, doing sightseeing. We just like to come up here now and just enjoy the the simple, simple pleasures, river swims walks some nice bits of food there's a great bakery up here that i always indulge in but they weren't open today so i'll have to get alex an extra special um, cake tomorrow we did have a lovely pastry from there that i'd got the other day um, so we had a beautiful custard almond croissant this morning for breakfast we shared one though because we knew we were going to be going out for a, a big lunch Sorry, I hope I'm not talking too quietly. Did Someone did say that on one of my other videos that they were struggling to hear. But I do wonder if it's sometimes the device sound quality um, and certainly wearing a pair of headphones does, does help, I find. That's how I usually watch the, the YouTube videos, usually because I'm watching in the evening when my partner's watching something on the TV. So I just pop my headphones on and stitch away while I watch. So do let me know if you're doing any Roxy Journal of Stitchery um, videos or any other stitchery or crafty videos in the, pop me a, a comment below um, and I'd love to, love to check out your, your work. Always on the lookout for new videos to watch, but I've got to check back on um, yeah, some of the other people that I definitely know are doing videos and see if they've um, yeah, popped up some videos. Leanne from Leanne's Crafty Cupboard. I think, I hope I've got the name right. Um, I'll have to check what she's up to because I love her work. And I always find her videos are just so serene and calm, calming to listen to and we get to see little glimpses of her, her garden. I love the fact that she's converted her dining room into her own crafty, crafty space and yeah, I think she reflects that it's yeah, a very happy and now well used space from something that wasn't wasn't as well used before. Definitely having a space that you can yeah work in, um, small or big, it is good to have somewhere that you don't have to yeah pack up all the time. I'm just working on the end of it. What is a very large dining table here, so it's fine. I can just leave my little piles of bits and pieces here um, in between working days because now it's just my partner and I that are here. My parents headed home yesterday. Yeah, yesterday it was. I'm definitely in that holiday mode where I'm losing track of losing track of time, which is good. I was watching Corinne's video and poor Corinne's been losing track of time, I think, because she's had impromptu guests arriving on her. So it's having a good giggle as she giggled at herself. Um, at her, her loss of loss of time. She's got beautiful pieces um, that she's creating as part of this project, Roxy's Journal of Stitchery. Just hearing beeping in the background, you probably can't hear it, but I think it's the washing machine here. It just sings a little song like a Mr. Whippy van. Do you have Mr. Whippy vans where you are? We, they're the vans that um, in our childhood, they went around selling ice creams. I'm, I'm assuming it's an American phrase, the Mr. Whippy Van, but I could be wrong. It could be something that's uniquely, uniquely Australian. But we have one in our area back, back home, so not where I am on holidays at the moment, but where we, where we live. Um, and it's an old man who I think got hit the van going during um, sort of yeah, COVID times. We heard him, I think, working on it and fixing it. And now he, now he comes around the street. We haven't yet bought an ice cream from him. We, we have said when we get back, we'll rush out on a summer evening and get ourselves a, an ice cream for nostalgic purposes. So hopefully this isn't too boring. I'm basically just popping up and then popping down and just doing a lot of little, little stitches. And I've just noticed the, the sequence I use, they just, 
hang around and they stick to your fingers too. So it's so, so hard to get them off. See, this one's actually still trying to stick to my finger. So I'll try and reunite that but with its little um, bunch of sequins. So with the stitches, yeah, you just want to sort of pop them up next door so you're not wasting too much thread sort of um, by jumping around too much. So you just keep all the stitches together and then that way you're maximising your your thread, especially when you're using specialty thread. So this pearl, pearl A thread, I think that's the, the bulk of um, the thread rolled on there. And so, yeah, you're paying a few dollars, um, in this case, for each each roll of it. So you wanna, wanna get the best value out of it. But I do love the Wonderfill Pearl A. So Wonderfill, um, like Wonder and then F-I-L and then Pearl A Cotton. Really nice to work with, just really smooth um, and great great colour combos. I think you can get some massive packs of them, of the variegated ones. Um, I, when I got them, I probably only got myself about eight or ten of them, I think, to start, but I'm planning to get myself some more. Maybe I'll get them for my birthday present this year. Always good to buy presents for yourself, I think, then you get exactly what you want. And I really don't want for much these days. But getting things for my crafting, I think, is a great thing. It keeps me, keeps me active in my in my mind and keeps me very relaxed and zen. So I think I've yeah found something that's a very good all-round activity. And I think it makes me sit like I find when I'm working, I'm sitting quite straight. Um, and yeah, definitely using using muscles, keeping muscles sort of clenched while you hold things. It's amazing. I've actually found since I um, yeah started doing stitching on a regular like every night basis which is what I pretty much do now um, unless there's something that kind of gets in the way of that but yeah it's a everyday thing habit habitual um, I found that yeah my arm um, muscle definition has actually improved quite a bit so I'll put that down to the, the stitching I also do a fair bit of walking with Travis and holding on to his lead although I use a, a waist a waist sort of belt um, when I'm yeah, walking him because then I don't have to have my hands tied up with the lead and it helps if I'm picking up things like his droppings and carrying the bag back back home with me it's much easier not to be sort of juggling that with a lead so I've almost stitched, finished stitching the area where on the design the bird had um, the more sort of intense darker coloration so I'll have to kind of have a bit of a think about do I keep going all the way over the bird or do I just put some more spread out colourful um, feathers and then sort of fill in the rest of the bird possibly with one of these um, crochet yarns in a more sort of creamy colour. So I might just extend down a little bit and then we'll have a look do it because even in the design there are some more colorful specks and I might just continue continue those down I think but just start to spread them spread my color bits out a bit more so I might do one over here I might do them slightly smaller as well I'm not sure I'll just see I might just jump around a little bit more and go up some purpley bits popping out but I don't think the different colors will will matter too much here in fact I think it's good because you just get that yeah that slight variation and it does look like you've worked through your piece with a range of different different threads but you haven't had any effort of um, threading and tying off and re-threading your needle you've just been able to keep going which does definitely help for the relaxation factor of the stitching you don't really have to think too much and again when you're painting with thread just do as you please if you sort of want to create a different patination on your bird you're totally free to do that I mean you can create the bird from scratch just sketch something sketch a birdie shape on a piece of fabric and use that as your base I'm just using this fabric because I absolutely adore it I've had it in my stash I haven't used it for anything and I really want to incorporate it into a piece that I'm going to be keeping and and having on my wall So 
I'm just stitching around the outside in this sort of purpley colour, but just to give it a bit of extra definition there. And I think we've got a torpy colour about to come into our thread. Let's finish going down and then we might put some more stitches in the body, the body of the bird. Some little torpy stitches down here. So I was having a quick look on the Facebook book, Facebook group before for Roxas Journal Stitchery, and there's lots of beautiful beautiful um, sheds and glass houses emerging. Um, there's one particular um, glass house I was looking at that's just been so well done, so many different elements added to it and just looking absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. I'm just amazed always by that group, just the amount of fabulous, gorgeous work that's there. I'm not sure what these little markings on the fabric are actually meant to be, but I'm just going to stitch over them, I think, with my little stitching because I can't quite figure out how they relate to the, the bird. Unless they're meant to be little leaves sticking up or something from where they're, where they're sitting. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe I'd sort of gone over a bit of that with the, the wing bit of the other, other bird. Torpy, bluey colour coming now. No, still top. Still top. So this um, ring is just a um, embroidery ring that came with a little kit from Kmart, and I think it was only like a few few dollars. So. It's not an expensive one, but it is helpful when you are doing this sort of quite detailed stitching and quite intense stitching. It just helps helps to hold the fabric um, straight so you're not constantly having to straighten it down on your, your surface and avoiding um, puckering of your design. I'll still be stitching at the end once all of this is done. I'll be stitching this onto a base um, piece. I might have to do some further little seed stitches as part of that process as well to make sure it doesn't sort of bulge off the, the piece but we'll get to that. I just wanted to do all of the really detailed embroidery without it being on that base piece just because it's going to be much easier to keep passing the, the needle through a thinner fabric at this stage and then I'll attach it after that. So now we've got some nice purpley bits coming out so I guess I can just keep following up this way with the purple know if I should spread the purple out a bit more but I think I'll just see where it see where it takes me see what birdie we create it's creating itself and Travis the dog is happily sleeping away again on the floor just near me out to it totally conked out from the day of adventures and fine dining well not really fine dining pub dining but very good food and it was such, an, such a beautiful shaded courtyard it was really nice to sit in on what was a sort of 30 I think 34 degree day here but it was actually quite cool and there's a little stream that runs through the the grounds um, so that was trickling next to next to us down below us but really lush greenery and they had umbrellas up so it was Actually, yeah, very pleasant temperature in the courtyard, which was good when you're eating a hearty, hearty dish like chicken parma. Do you have chicken parmigiana where you are in the world? 
I'm assuming it's a sort of a dish that's probably made its way um, around the world, but who knows? In Australia, it's one of those dishes that, yeah, most pubs or places like that um, or hotels will do a good version of a parma, so it's a pretty safe dish to order. It's a bit of a mainstay. This doesn't get too too boring for you but I'm trying to show more more videos with the process rather than just showing you the sort of finished finished effect because that way you can kind of learn or if you want to stitch along you can stitch along and I may as well pop the video on while I'm working and you can choose once you've sort of seen something and if it's not um, yeah not teaching you anything new or you're not you don't want to sort of see the finished effect then you can obviously yeah either zoom through it, fast forward through it to the end, or you can move on to the next next video. There's definitely no shortage of good videos to watch on YouTube. It's lovely how many people actually yeah, put the time in to, to make them and share, share their processes, share their finds, share their materials. I know I've learned a lot just from, from watching and also, yeah, made some, made some nice little virtual friendships nice to see and hear those little glimpses of yeah people's people's lives okay. I'm actually been a big um, YouTube watcher before the Roxy Journal of Stitchery um, before I joined those projects um, I'd had been a member of or signed up for an uh, account of YouTube many, many years ago, but just hadn't really used it that much. But then once I started watching Rachel and Sarah and their videos and started following some other people that were making videos, I thought, yeah, this is actually really, really good. And then I thought, I may as well join the community, give it a go. What's the worst that can happen? I can do a really bodgy bodgy video or I might actually do a video and people might get something out of it and so that's that's a pretty decent sort of decent risk to take and if you laugh if you can laugh at yourself and possibly yeah take some not everyone will love what you do and that's fine um, not get too precious about it just keep going just keep on keeping on found most people are, well in fact everyone I've dealt with so far has been lovely and encouraging and positive um, in their comments and that's kind of what you hope people are. You hope if someone just isn't into something that they just move along really. Um, there's no need for nastiness in this world. There's enough nasty things without people, people adding to it I reckon. The more we can spread a little bit of joy to each other you never know that the difference something a bit of kindness might make to someone's someone's day i reckon reckon that's a very aussie aussie phrase but always try and find the kindness always makes you feel better too when you're kind one of those return gifts now I said that I was gonna do these stitches a bit further apart, but I don't think I've done that, but that's fine. My, it seems with this bird, I wanna keep going over at about the same width, although I think I'll then come up with a bit of that um, lighter colored crochet yarn as planned, which I think will just help to then, um, actually I think it's okay, we'll see. We shall see, because the under, color of the fabric so that lighter area is actually showing lighter I have done them further enough apart that yeah you can still see the see the under color so I think it is actually okay I've learned with this sort of stitching or seed stitching or cat the stitching 
just to yeah, keep going with it and see how it looks as a massed effect at the end. Because sometimes when you're in the middle of it, it just doesn't sort of look totally right to you or you're not so sure about it and you might sort of think, oh, should I stop and um, pick it all? Not that I would on this because I'm actually happy with how this one's progressing. But yeah, always just, just give it the benefit of completing the little section that you're on and then making an assessment whether, whether you're happy with it. Just checking the video again. Yes, I am on screen. We are recording. I think the recording's up the right way. Sometimes I get that wrong too. So I saw Suzanne from Vintage Blend Studio. She's going to be running a virtual, virtual retreat or a virtual video with a special project of making a vintage sort of appliqued and decorated tablecloth. So head over and check out that if that's something that you'd be interested in doing. I don't have any affiliations with Suzanne. I just want to um, yeah, promote what other great people in our little community of stitches are doing. It's great when people put themselves out there and it's nice if if there's people out there that want to want to do something like that. So yeah, she's got kits with these tablecloths um, all different ones that she's picked out and accessorized with different materials and then she's um, making or has made um, videos with the process that she followed um, to create the project and she'll be doing doing that I think she was originally yeah planning it as a face-to-face a -face one but for whatever reason I think dates and things like that just didn't didn't work out I know Corinne, I think, was planning to come down to, to Melbourne. Would definitely be lovely to meet some of the, the stitchery ladies. Well, so far it's ladies. If there's any gents out there, I'm very happy for you and I will say our stitchery folks then. I probably should say that anyway. I um, shouldn't just say ladies because people might identify by a range of different genders and pronouns. but it does seem to be mostly, mostly women based on our Roxy group and based on the, the demographic data that, um, that YouTube shows you. Which who knows, I guess it collects that from when we sign up for our accounts, does it? I don't know how it tells you that you've got um, sort of yeah, different age groups or gender groups viewing your videos. Not sure. All a mystery to me. Still very, still very new at this whole YouTube caper. It's just lovely that anyone views my videos. Really. <laughs> I hope, I hope they're helpful. I hope they, yeah, give you something to, to either watch and learn from, or something to pop on and listen to me natter away while you while you do your own stitching, which is my, my main way that I have it. I usually just have it on and I've got my own needle and thread out and I'm doing my own thing while it's, while it's playing and then periodically looking up and seeing what's, what's happening on the video. It's just nice. It's like having someone to keep you company while you're, while you're stitching but not someone that's um, demanding of your, your attention. So I must admit, ever since the sort of yeah the COVID lockdowns and lots of lots of time at home or with just your yeah your immediate householders, um, I get a lot. I get quite exhausted around people. So I really do need a bit of that that solitude solitude time. Don't know if that's the same for other people or if I if I've just become a hermit through the whole the whole process. Who knows? Who knows? I'm not going to stress about it. It's just what it is, and kind of you got, need to know what what brings your energy and what takes your energy, and then make sure you're getting enough of the stuff that that brings your energy. So let's just hold our little birdie up there, so you can see lots of little stitches over over him. So I might just because I'm not sure for sure. Oh, I think I can probably tie that off. I think I've got enough stitches there and I can keep the thread and if I did want to go back and 
and do something, I can definitely do that. I probably should have actually tied it properly, not the way that I just did it then. But that's okay. I'll just catch a, catch a thread, tie it down. Not needle, little scissors, stalk scissors from Switzerland. So I'm pretty happy with that. I don't even know if I need to go over it with this thread. Let's just have a look. Or would I want to use the lighter one? I think I quite like the colour of this one. Might just add a few just to add to that paler, paler colour on the the chest. Let's see how it looks. Let's first of all see if I can actually thread my needle. Can I thread my needle? It's not even that tiny of a hole in this one so I should be able to thread it. There we go. just put some little stitches on the belly I guess with the bird you could really just keep um, yeah over stitching and over stitching and get lots and lots because that's kind of what I did with my other um, my earlier pieces part of the Christmas journal of stitchery where I had a, a bird painted with with threads so that got very intense um, lots and lots of little feather pieces on it so why not just add a bit of extra texture here oops one thing um, to think about in the ordering of your piece is don't do it the way I did and do beads when you've still got something like this that you're trying to stitch because they will probably catch on the beads at some point when you're trying to stitch them down I just wanted to work on something that wasn't the bird um, when it was dark last night um, and not so good for doing videos um, and because I wanted to save this to, to do with you just to show you a second technique um, for creating birds or other other things but birds particularly where you want to create these little feathery feathery shapes so yeah I think that's going to be a good addition to the the chest of the bird so I'll just keep going and then yeah I'm looking forward to sharing the butterfly which I was just figuring out as I as I did it and the butterfly has um, bullion stitch on it and then I guess more the sort of satin satin or sateen stitch again don't know which it is satin or sateen I really should probably just write down have in front of me the proper names of of these stitches I'm self-taught and don't think I always use exactly the right titles for them but hopefully I at least show you the stitches and then you can have a go at doing them doing them yourself and it doesn't matter too much what they're called okay we'll keep working down a little bit crochet threads that's you can often find that in op shops um, and it's like a it's like a PLA really because it's got that sort of more um, single strandiness to it like you don't separate it into strands like you do with the embroidery floss um, and it's quite easy to to work with and it's quite strong as well so even though it's usually old it's vintage stuff that's been sitting around it generally doesn't doesn't break 
and you can get it in those nice sort of taupey, creamy sort of colours, which are good for your when you're wanting to bring in either doing a neutrals like this or where you might be in a piece wanting to have more vintage tones to it and less stark white. So you wouldn't want to use a white regular cotton, for example. But then it came, comes in lots of different um, versions of, of off-white off cream, taupe, browns. This one's almost got a bit of a bronzy green in it, this other one. So again, I could have used that as my neutral, but I just thought I'd use a neutral that's similar to the, the chest of my little bird. Travis has woken up and he's doing a circuit of the table as he likes to do. He's coming to coming to check what's happening. Will we just give them a little look at you, Travis? Are oh, you a bit camera shy? A bit camera shy, Travis? Did you want to go outside? You want to go outside with Papa? You'll just have to excuse me for a moment. I'm just going to walk back. Wake up and he wanted to go and see what was happening, see if there's any bunny rabbits that he can can spy. Now, hopefully I haven't turned the, the video off in that time. Hopefully I haven't made you feel too too dizzy either. It's much easier than stopping the video and then having to splice videos because then I find some, for some reason iMovie makes my video size huge and then I struggle to fit it the original plus the iMovie one on my my phone and I prefer not to transfer to the Mac to then have to upload there. I like to just do it on the phone quickly and get it get it uploading. So apologies for the little break. Hopefully that gave you a little break if you needed to grab a drink. I think I need to drink some water. I don't think I've um, had enough water today. It's definitely been warm but I'm not complaining about that it's nice to have a summer holiday with warm weather to enjoy okay where else probably jumped down a bit too far that time but that's okay I just want to get a few stitches into the, the bottom down here and again, with something like this, even if you did your stitches and then you go away from it and then come back and think you want to add more stitches, you absolutely can. It's the sort of thing that you can just pick up a different colour of thread and add different ones, or you can just keep going with the same thread. You could use more of the, the variegated thread if you wanted to. I just want to add these creamy ones sort of all the way around here. And now it sounds like Travis wants to come back inside to see Mama. Do you want to do some crafting, Travis? Except your, your version of crafting, Travis, usually involves tearing things apart rather than constructing items. It's not quite the type of crafting that I do. Yours is more a deconstructive art, Mr. Travis the Labrador. What I think Travis is, um, trying to tell us is that he thinks it's time for part two of dinner. For some reason this Labrador has um, got us so well trained that he gets his dinner separated into two serves, an earlier one at, at 5.30 and then one closer to, to 6.30 and I can't actually see a clock so I don't actually know what time it is but it might be heading on for heading on for that time or he might just be trying his trying his luck with mum and dad to see if we'll will succumb but he has mostly vegetables for his dinner just a bit of it's got sardines with tonight's dinner but he also did very well he had some tidbits today when we were having our birthday lunch for Alex so got to try a bit of chicken parma but without any of the sauce on it just the the pure chickeny bit and a, a couple of chips when he's way too 
as well as his regular lunch, which is a, a pig's ear. So he's definitely not not underfed, but we keep him a very good weight. Everyone always comments how how sleek he looks, but I think we're just lucky to have got a Labrador that's just a really, really good, good build. His dad's a very tall, slender build, so Travis definitely inherited that. And yeah, while Travis was a guide dog puppy, he decided that the, the pet life was for him. At the time that he went in for assessment at, at guide dogs, he was still sort of, yeah, still definitely still maturing and not always listening to the commands that he was, was given. Um, even though they were all very clearly in his head because now he um, is a bit more mature, all of the things that we taught him, he absolutely obeys them. So it was just a maturity thing for him, but he had what they call puppy distraction, where when he met another dog or saw another dog, rather than bringing his head immediately back to the front when you say leave it, he would want to see the dog and play with the dog and be distracted by the dog, which obviously a dog can't be doing if it's going to be guiding a vision impaired person and being their, their safety net, their guide, their, um, yeah, their, their animal to make sure that they can safely move around. So the dogs go through very stringent assessments and in Travis's case where he was um, sort of developmentally at that point, it meant that he didn't make it into the guide dog program, but it meant that we got the most beautiful um, little boy to come and join our, join our family. Um, and also a very well-trained pup because we'd invested all those hundreds of hours working, working with him. And as he matured, all that all that training just absolutely shone through. So he's such a such a sweetheart. He is a goofball. Before I was having a a bottle of water, well, about to have a bottle of water on the couch, but he just decided he, he wanted it and wanted to play with it, and then gave it to him, and he punctured, punctured the bottle. Had water going everywhere. He is a he is a goof bag. So I think we're almost done on our little bird here. I'll give you a little, little look. I haven't decided yet whether we'll do pick out the eyes in a different thread or leave it, leave it just as it is. I might run a couple more stitches just down the body, down to the bottom. Pop them down here. I think Travis is about to go for a walk with my partner. So that was the door just closing. So at least that way he won't bother us for, for dinner if he's out for a walk. They do say that Labradors have an insatiable appetite. They also say that Labradors think everything in the or everything in the world is edible to a Labrador. I think it's pretty true, really. Just add a few more stitches. It's addictive doing this stitching, I'd have to say. If I think if I was just if stitching by myself, I'd just keep going and keep going. But I don't want to create a video that's hugely, hugely long. Getting a few little knots. I'm going to take that as the universe saying, Christine, that's that's enough. Put the needle down. So we'll call it, call it quits here. I'll just bring this up to the camera so you can have a have a look. Oops, that's not very good when I touch it like that, is it? Because I put my whole hand, hand in it and it probably doesn't actually help it focus. So apologies for that. That's the little bird. And then yeah, in our next video, we'll come back and have a look at the butterfly. And I've also yeah done the beading around here as well. But lots more that we can potentially um, embellish on this too. I'll have to just check the width of my piece, but I'm thinking this, um, what I think is a cornflower over here, we can embellish that as well as the other, other butterfly. So thanks so much for watching. Um, hope you are having a great day or a great evening. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye everyone.